And we are back here on the National Hour. I'm Darius Thigpen. And I'm Jeffrey Hammersley. And it's great to have you joining us here on the National Hour. Let's get to a few uh, breaking stories from this past week. Jared Sullinger was arrested over the Labor Day weekend for domestic violence. He turned himself in to a Boston Area Police Department Tuesday morning. Jeff, this is uh, not something that no. you would really think Sullinger was even capable of. When he was here, he seemed like a really fun-loving, great yeah. guy, a hard worker, and now domestic violence. What does this mean for his basketball career? I think for his career, I think I, I can see him maybe being out for a few games there. I really think just trying to get everything together, trying to get his personal life and all that stuff back in, into shape. I can see him missing a little bit of time, but I don't see him missing that much time, especially saying Boston is in their whole rebuilding process. I think they're going to need as much talent and as many key players that they've had before here for the Brad Stevens era. Yeah, it really is uh, going to be a big part of Boston moving forward. So we'll see what they do with Jared Sollinger. Moving on, we're going to talk a little soccer on the show. I know USA. we don't talk soccer enough, so get you excited. <laughs> USA is going to be playing Mexico here in Columbus at Cruz Stadium. That is going to be Tuesday. So, Jeff, this is not as big a match as I initially thought it was because the U.S. is already yeah. pretty much into US, the U.S., they're leading the CONCAF standings, and Mexico, I believe, is in that three or four spot. A loss puts them in that playoff game with New Zealand, so there's a lot on the line there. But really, fans are pumped up for this game because I know at the Ohio Union, they were giving out tickets, and they, it got absurd. I mean, there's, the, the soccer following here is humongous. Oh, yeah. there, there are fans here, and I think they're running as much as they can get a Tuesday at Crew Stadium, I really think the United States, a win here, puts him as a key player going into the World Cup and in, in Rio next coming up coming up in this yeah. year. And not just that, but they could also possibly uh, eliminate Mexico yeah. from contention. I mean, for getting into the World Cup if uh, they win. Really, if you think Mexico, you always think it's a very power, it's a powerhouse of the soccer national team, and they could potentially be out. That's like having Spain not there now. It's just it's gonna be weird to see, but if, they, if they're struggling now, I, I, it's possible. And really, when you're in that position, when Costa Rica's in second, United States is in first, the, the, the fact that the USA is leading, I think, shows that Jurgen Klinsmann he's doing a good job here, with the, which is really trying to rebuild and make USA soccer huge in America. Another huge story this week: Roger Federer misses the U.S. Open finals. He has not made a final in any of the uh, majors this year. So no Grand Slam events, no titles for Roger Federer as he loses in the quarterfinal at the U.S. Open. First time since 2002 he has not made yeah. any of the finals in the Grand Slams. And I feel a little bit sad for this guy because like, I grew up watching tennis a little bit. It's like It was always Roger Federer, and now it's like you can see it's the passing of the torch. Novak Djokovic is now the guy that's got to always be there. Andy Murray has finally broken the glass ceiling, and he's got to be in the, in the finals and semifinal stuff. But I think, really for Federer, I think the, he's past the prime. I really think it's sort of sad, but it's tennis. And the shelf life there, you have, you have a few good years, and maybe for, for Federer, a decade. But after that, it's, it's slowly you're going to fade away. Yeah, once you get north of 30, yeah. they say your yep. career is pretty much over. As uh, He's on past 30, so is it over for Federer? Um, he may make one or two runs. I think if it's going to happen, Wimbledon is going to be his best chance. But other than that, I think if he gets back to a semifinals, that's going to be fantastic. I, it's, I think he's just over the hill right now. So now let's move on to our final stories, and we are going to start with Mr. Jeff Hammersley. All right, then. Mascots. Every school has them. We have Brutus Buckeye. Georgia has Ugga. So it should be noted that the mascot world lost one of its own this past weekend, and Butler Blue, too. Butler Blue 2 was and will always be the mascot to Butler University. He will forever be known as the English Bulldog that wore a Butler sweater courtside to basketball games and was with the Brad Stevens-led men's basketball team that danced their way to back-to-back -to -back Final Fours. Wherever Butler basketball was, Butler Blue 2 was there cheering or barking for a Butler victory. Somewhere, Butler Blue 2 is sitting in doggy heaven, waiting for another basketball season and waiting to cheer on his beloved Butler Bulldogs. Rest easy, Butler Blue 2. The season is just right around the corner. We always admire athletes for feats most people can't do. Dunking a basketball, hitting a slider, running a marathon, doing a triathlon, or anything else. Distance swimmer Diana Nyad accomplished a feat that literally blows those out of the water. Over the Labor Day weekend, Nyad finished a 53-hour swim going from Havana, Cuba to Key West, Florida. The 103-mile swim was riddled with sharks, a strong current, and schools of venomous jellyfish. But Nyad finished the swim that completed a dream of hers. Quite possibly the most impressive feat is that Nyad finished the swim on her fifth try after failing for the first time 35 years ago. 
Nyad is 64. I don't know how old you are or what athletic feat you've accomplished as of late, but when you hear of something more impressive than that, please let me know. That's okay. I'll wait. So that is the show. We are done here on the National Hour. Yep. Jeff, it has been a couple of good weeks working with you, man. I've made it through two shows. I'm still here. Next week, I might bring bring back some more football. I tell you what, picks. you're going to lose your black stripe eventually. We <laughs> yes. are you're working you into the rotation. Here. Alrighty then. Well, next week, I'll be back here. Hopefully. Remember, OhioStateSports.net, Scarlet and Gray Sports Radio. We will have live coverage of the San Diego State Ohio State football game that is going to be at 3:30 on Saturday, and you can get all your updates here on Buckeye TV and from the Lantern. Thank you for joining us here on the National Hour, and we'll see you next time. This is Manny Wilson speaking for the National Hour, a Buckeye TV television production.